Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Over the years, the international community through the United Nations has been able to aggregate its vision for people empowerment from Millennium Development Goals to Sustainable Development Goals. Governments of developing countries, including Nigeria, have been a part of this journey since the turn of this century. But there has always a huge expectation from their citizens to provide certain fundamental platforms for the sustenance of a good life. Unfortunately, it seems that these countries are still being held down by basic craving for availability of food, unstable political climates, and even civil conflicts. How well has the Nigerian government been doing to reduce inequality in income while providing decent jobs and promoting inclusive growth? We're now going to look at all of that with Professor Ebere Onwudiwe, political scientist and development economist. Professor Onwudiwe is also the chief executive officer of the O Analytics Research and Development Center. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Prof, welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Prof. Well, Thanks this so is going to be basically a continuation of our last conversation with you on the uh, SDGs, the Social Development Goals. And uh, I would like to just kickstart that by asking you whether you agree with the Minister of Agriculture, right? Yes. Alaji Nanono, who recently said that there is no hunger in Nigeria. The SDG goal uh, number two uh, talks about zero hunger. From your research, is it really true that we have zero hunger in Nigeria? <laughs> uh, uh, I think the Honorable Minister is wrong. A lot of Nigerians are hungry. We are having a lot of people that uh, live beyond, uh, below the uh, uh, poverty uh, mark. And we have people that don't have three square meals a day. So I think uh, it's an extreme exaggeration for the minister to say so. Yeah, we also have 87 million Nigerians living in poverty. But at this point, we'll take a short break and we'll be back to continue the conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Professor Onwujiwe, Chief Executive Officer of the O Analytics Research and Development Center. Sir, before we went on the break, I was talking about the 87 million Nigerians living in poverty. And I wanted to relate that to SDG Goal 8, which talks about job creation and entrepreneurship. But I'm going to put that to one side and focus on another part of Goal 8, which talks about the eradication of forced labor and human trafficking. In view of the recent and appalling revelations that we are a country in which people are imprisoned, clamped in chains, tortured, sexually abused, starved, we have had these revelations occur. We've had people freed from these sort of slave-like conditions. What are your thoughts on this with regards to where we stand with Goal 8 of the SDGs? Well, um, the abuse of human rights, it's never good anywhere in the world. And uh, the examples you've given uh, about on Nigeria is a source of shame for all of us. But uh, uh, the the goals of the, uh, of, of the SDGs are designed to create a good life for all humanity everywhere in the world. And in the goal that talks about decent uh, jobs, decent work, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, employment, and the rest of it, the Nigerian government has not been doing very, very well. We have... Uh, we have uh, uh, targets that we have used in our work to measure how much Nigeria has made progress in providing decent work for uh, its population. The targets include uh, real GDP, uh, real GDP pay, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, per, 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 per employee, per in individual worker, we measured uh, things like employment, employment of youth, and we had a criteria uh, of how 
progress is being made in these targets. And in some of these targets, Nigerians, uh, 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 Nigeria as a country is making uh, some progress moderately uh, uh, in terms of real GDP growth, real GDP per employee, uh, for employed people. Uh, and, uh, but in areas of employment, uh, in areas of employment for the youth, the country is not doing very well. So our overall assessment in looking at all the targets is that Nigeria is performing below the expected level. And uh, so we hope that it is uh, the federal government that should decide to do something about these findings and find a way to improve the lot of Nigerians in the workplace. Absolutely, Professor. And although although we are really not reaching our target here, it's also important to note that we may not be doing as badly when it comes to the inequality of income as other African countries. I was looking up our Gini coefficient earlier, and we're about 0.391 compared to South Africa, which is 0.6. But this doesn't take away from the fact that inequality is prevalent all across our land. And it takes me to the Ninth National Assembly, and I want to speak about what sort of focus they need to be putting on certain bills. Because because if we look back since 2015 or even before, there are bills like the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill that were posed before the Senate and got a no. For example, there are bills like the Disability Bill that had so much trouble getting enforcement. And we have so many bills that should exist, so many bills that also shouldn't exist, discriminatory bills that put people in positions where they don't have the opportunities that other people do. And clearly there's a problem going on in the National Assembly that needs to change if we really want policy for the S. SDGs here. What sort of policy do we need to see the Ninth National Assembly putting forward to really tackle this problem of the inequality of income? Okay, well, uh, yes. What we uh, looked at was income inequality, as you have uh, rightly observed. But there are several other kinds of inequalities in our society as you also uh, implied in your statement and question. Number one is that we have inequality in terms of gender. We have inequality in terms of disabilities. We have inequality even in terms of ethnicities in our country. We have inequality in terms of uh, class in our country. So, so many levels of inequalities. And, uh, but our, our focus is on income. Uh, one thing uh, to, that one would use in measuring the seriousness of the government and the, the branch, the, the legislative branch, as you zeroed in on the National Assembly, is that first and foremost, this country does not have a policy on inequality. It's nowhere to be found. There's no policy on inequality. And so, uh, that may be the first place that a National Assembly should start, to try to think about coming up with a policy on inequality. And it's only when you have that that you can say you have an instrument to address this particular national problem. Well, we score very, very low in inequality uh, measures for income. And the, the, the whole thing is stacked against the poor. A lot of poor people, well, you know, there's a difference between inequality and poverty. So let's not mix that up. Uh, for, for poverty, we have, we have a line. We have a benchmark where we say if somebody is earning anything less than this, that person is poor. But for inequality, we don't have any such benchmark. Inequality is just the difference between those who have and those who don't. And how much is that difference? In the case of our country, it is really, really huge. As Oxfam data has shown all over all through the years, how the, a few, the income of five Nigerians uh, is more than, uh, could, could, is, is big enough to lift 112 million Nigerians out of, uh, out of this uh, situation of poverty. So we have such data. Nigeria should not pat itself on the back because it's, uh, it's doing uh, uh, slightly better 
than a few other African countries. We are the largest economy in the continent, for Christ's sake. And so we should, do, we should set examples in narrowing the income gap between the rich and the poor. Well, uh, Prof, I mean, uh, all the goals that we've been looking at, it looks like, uh, you know, Nigeria is not doing well on uh, almost every goal. Is there any particular goal out of the 17 uh, where you think uh, Nigeria is doing very well? Maybe um, goal 17, we deals with their partnerships, because we seem to be holding meetings, you know, either in Yokohama or in South Africa or... <laughs> in uh, Sochi, in Russia, you know, striking partnerships on some of these issues. Where, where do you think the progress, uh, you know, indicator lies out of all these uh, 17 goals? Well, in truth, uh, I think the best approach to the 17 SDG goals is for our country to really sit down and don't aspire to achieve the whole number of 17 goals. Because uh, the situation for us is unique. We don't have the money. The government is broke. It is owing a lot. And uh, it doesn't even have enough funds to fund its budget. So to expect such a government to uh, to, uh, um, to, uh, to implement the 17 SDGs and be marked high in each of the SDGs is, uh, is to expect too much. I think what the government should do is to select some of them and prioritize them and say, well, look, we are said to be the, the home for the largest number of extremely poor in the world. That is an international mark of shame. And so what we should do is we are going to focus on poverty. We are going to focus on uh, improving the lot of many more Nigerians so that they can escape the extreme poverty line. I think that would be an important priority. That they is can a, choose that is a education. Very priority, sir. They I wanted to ask you about the 30 billion yes. naira being devoted to SIP, the social and intervention programs by the president's um, budget proposal. What are your thoughts on that? Because, Dr. Abati, in our previous segment, you mentioned Gorbachev. You reminded me of Nikita Khrushchev, his predecessor, who said, he, well, he denied saying, we will bury you about America, but he said, your working class will bury you. At the rate that we are going, the poor will start to eat the rich. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well, I think one of the expression of uh, serious efforts uh, to help the poor is the social investment policy. Uh, but uh, as you imply, you know, I mean, we hear the government has uh, budgeted 500 billion for social investment. But the important fact is how much of that has been released. And you, you will find that not... Uh, a sufficient amount of this budget has been released. And therefore, uh, we, we should not be looking at that high level of, uh, of budgetary allocation. So what uh, we, we, can, we can aspire, as I said, must be put against our ability to do so. And, um, and um, I think, uh, as I was saying, poverty, education, things that deal with health, these things are the ones, these are kinds of social investment that will impact on the poor because the government should do things uh, that I think uh, is, should be part of the, the last question about uh, National Assembly. They should look at our tax system. Our tax system is too regressive. There's a lot of loopholes for the big businesses to not pay tax to this country. And we should instead insist on progressive taxation that will take money from these huge companies and use it to make social investments, to invest in education, 
to invest in health, to invest in poverty alleviation Quite in any correct. which way we want. Quite correct, Prof. I think it is... Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Thank you for your insights on Nigeria's progress with the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm sure the conversation will continue again some other day. Thank you very much, Professor. A very wonderful work.